So why do Elon Musk, Ray Dalio, and multiple four-star generals say China's going to be invading Taiwan in no time? But if you look at the numbers, it all makes sense why they will, or more importantly, need to, because they actually need what Taiwan has to offer. So anyways, let's set that part aside. When you think about U.S. and import-export, you think about Panama Canal. When you think about what's important to Europe, you think about Suez Canal. But when you think about China, Philippines, Malaysia, India, you would think about the Strait of Malacca. So the reason why this is so important to China is because just a few years ago, every day China would ship, would come and move and dump three and a half acres of sand every day just to build land. So they can say it's their island, which turned into the nine dash line to protect them to say that is our territory because that entire area is filled with many U.S. allies. So God forbid if they all unified against China, China would be in a lot of trouble. Why? Here's some data for you. $5.3 $5.3 trillion trade is passing through the South China Sea every year. More than 60% of global maritime trade and more than 22% of total global trade passes through this water body. One third of the global shipping passes through the sea every year. Over 60% of its trade and value traveling by sea. More than half of the world's fishing vessels are in the South China Sea. And the same exact region is also thought to contain oil reserve of at least 7.7 billion barrels. Some even say 213 billion barrels. If that is true, that would be the equivalent of about 80% of the oil reserves of Saudi Arabia. And last but not least, one Chinese estimates that the entire South China Sea estimates natural gas reserves to be two quadrillion cubic feet. Quadrillion is one more than a trillion. So when you look at that, China looks at this entire area, says, guys, we got to figure something out here. We cannot give this thing up. We need all of this stuff for many different reasons. This is why many believe that China will eventually invade Taiwan. We're going to talk about that today. Okay, so if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So let's get right into it. So look, this entire area, the South China Sea, who claims this territory? China is trying to say this is our territory and why they started building all these islands, which which we'll take a look at it. But let's first learn about what this nine dash line really means. So this refers to a demarcation line used by the People's Republic of China and Taiwan to claim large portions of the South China Sea. The line encompasses about 90% of the South China Sea and includes areas claimed by several other countries. So so what are the origins of this? This concept for the first line appeared on a Chinese map in 1947. Initially, it had 11 dashes, but by 1949, when the communists took over mainland China and established the People's Republic of China, the claim was inherited by the PRC while the Republic of China retreated to Taiwan. And in 1950s, the two dashes in the Gulf of Tonkin were removed, thus leading to the nine dash line. The significance of this is that the South China Sea is rich in resources such as oil, natural gas, fisheries. Additionally, it's one of the world's major shipping routes, making its control significant both economically and strategically. You ever wonder why Jamie Dimon, CEO of Chase, has a $900 million art collection, or Steve Cohen, $1.1 billion art collection, or Microsoft? has nearly a billion dollar collection. The company, 5,000 art pieces in 180 different locations worldwide. Why? Because billionaires and millionaires understand one of the ways to hedge against inflation, money being printed, market crash, interest rates, is to buy non-duplicatable assets. And one of them is art, fine art. And that's why today's sponsor is Masterworks. Let me tell you a little bit about Masterworks. You may be watching the same Pat, I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire. I can't afford to buy Warhol or Banksy or Basquiat. How am I going to buy that? Well, Masterworks allows you to buy fractional shares. Like buying a share of Apple, you buy a share of a Banksy painting or a Warhol piece. You're able to do that through Masterworks. This is why over 800,000 people have signed up with Masterworks. Offerings have sold out within minutes, and many of you have already created accounts, and some of you that haven't. This is your chance to skip the waiting list and start your collection today. Just click on the link in the description, go to masterworks.art forward slash value team, and once again, masterworks.art forward slash value team, or click on the link below. Now, when it comes down to the territorial claims, with the nine dash line, there are several archipelago, namely the Parcel Islands, the Spratly Islands, and the Scarborough Shoal. These land features are also claimed wholly or in part by several countries in the region, including the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan. Look, you may be saying this, Pat, who cares about these two dash line, the nine dash line, the 11 dash line? This is so sensitive to people who live in this area to the point where Vietnam banned the movie Barbie 
from being played in Vietnam because of the way you drew the nine dash line they were offended by. It's a very sensitive topic in that area. So now, international disputes. China's extensive claims based on the nine dash line have resulted in multiple territorial disputes in the South China area. These tensions have occasionally escalated into standoffs and confrontations. And the UNCLOS text, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, is an international treaty that defines nations rights and responsibilities in the world's oceans it establishes guidelines for businesses the environment and the management of marine natural resources however the nine dash line claim doesn't adhere to the conventional territorial sea limits set by unclos china is a signatory of unclos but interprets it in ways that supports its broad claims in the south china sea L- let's talk about the 2016 ruling in 2013 the philippines initiated a case at the permanent court arbitration PCA against China challenging the validity of the nine dash line and in 2016 the PCA ruled in favor of the Philippines on several key issues notably it included that China's nine dash line claim has no legal basis under UNCLOS however China rejected the ruling and it did not lead to significant changes on the ground China continues to assert its claims in the South China Sea often back in its stance with naval and coast guard patrols as well as land reclamation and militarization of certain features this has resulted in intentions not only with neighboring countries but also with extra regional powers most notably the united states which conducts freedom of navigation operations in that area so according to the exclusive economic zone there's a number of how many miles a land can be from a country to say that's ours so when you look at eez according to international law an exclusive economic zone or eez is an area of the ocean generally extending 200 nautical miles roughly 230 miles beyond a nation's territorial sea within which a coastal nation has jurisdiction over both living and non-living resources so if you look at china and taiwan you know what the distance is 81 miles so this is where china is trying to say Taiwan is part of us, and Taiwan saying, no, 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 we're our own country. We have nothing to do with you. So it's such a cluster in South China Sea that all these countries are building fake islands, man-made islands to say, whoa, this is within 200 miles, and this is our territory. And everyone said, no, that's not your territory. China's doing it. Malaysia's doing it. Vietnam's doing it. Philippines doing it. Literally everybody in that territory is doing it. Led by the Kuomintang Party, the KMT Party resumed its civil war with the Chinese Communist Party. And by 1949, the CCP emerged victorious on the mainland, leading on the establishment of the People's Republic of China. The KMT, led by Chiang Kai-shek, retreated to Taiwan along with about 2 million refugees. And the KMT continued to declare itself the legitimate government of all of China and vowed to retake the mainland. And that leads us to the separate paths from 1950 onwards, Taiwan underwent significant economic development, transforming from an agrarian society to one of the four Asian tigers. Initially an authoritarian state, under martial law, Taiwan also began a process of democratization in the late 80s, culminating its first presidential election in 1996. In other words, Taiwan sees themselves as their own country. Guys, leave us alone, let us do what we're doing here. We got our own economy, we're doing good. So now, how is US handling this relationship with China and Taiwan? Up until 1979, the U.S. officially recognized the Republic of China on Taiwan as the legitimate government of all China. However, in a move to establish formal relations with the People's Republic of China and Beijing, the U.S. switched diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing on January 1st of 1979. The PRC views Taiwan as part of its territory, and one of its conditions for diplomatic relations was that the U.S. could not maintain official diplomatic ties with both the PRC and the ROC. And that led to the Taiwan Relations Act. While the U.S. severed formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan in 1979, it passed the Taiwan Relations Act the same year. The TRA provides a legal framework for the continuation of unofficial relations between the U.S. and Taiwan. It also commits the U.S. to provide Taiwan with arms of defensive character and states that any effort to undermine Taiwan's future by non-peaceful means would be of great concern to the U.S. And by the way, they're saying this trying to make two people happy. Look, this is your business. You guys kind of figured out, but we got a great relationship relationship with them and we got a great relationship with you and we don't want to see you bully these guys if you do we can't do business with you so u.s is kind of holding this conflict from taking place because china knows if they do something here they may lose the u.s relationship and they desperately still need the u.s relationship so it's important to know which country needs this area the most not just based on their gdp but as well as the percentage of all the trade they do so look at this here u.s if you look at this look at the top it says country then percentage of share of world gdp then it says trade value through south china sea in billions then it says south china sea trade as percentage 
of all trade in goods. U.S. is only 5.72%, but look at China, 39.5%. Then it's Japan, it's 19%, Germany, 9%, UK, it's 12%, France, 7 or 8%, India's 31%, Italy's 8 Brazil's 23 Canada's 2 or 3%. But if you look at China, nearly 40%. There's one country that cannot afford a lot of conflict in this area, and that's China. America can, because it's only 5.72, but China first, then India. It matters to the both of them. So, so to just kind of help give a visual so you understand what this means, let's just say China all of a sudden had conflicts with all of these guys. None of them want to work with them. Not Vietnam, not Philippines, not Malaysia, and U.S., and they've made U.S. upset. If you look at this chart, where do they go through to get the shipments of everything they need? Do they go all the way around? Can they no longer use the Malacca Strait or the Sunda Strait or the Lombok Strait, they're going to need all of that. Diplomacy matters more to China than any other country in that region. So now you may say, but Pat, you still haven't answered the question about Taiwan. Why do they need Taiwan? Let me explain a little bit more. Number one, if you watched our semiconductor video, you would know why they need it. Because Taiwan produces some of the most highly demanded, technical, difficult semiconductor chips in the world. They need Taiwan. But it's more than just semiconductor chips. They're worried about the trade vulnerability. China is landlocked and heavily dependent on imports over North Desert, the West Himalayas, and South, which is a jungle. 60% of its trade is value traveling by sea. And between 2000 and 2020, China's food self-sufficiency ratio decreased from 93.6% to 65.8%. And last but not least, China imports over 70% of its oil. So again, they need that area. And if you look at this here with U.S. naval bases and installations, look how focused we are here, whether it's naval air facility, whether it's U.S. naval base, whether it's naval station area, whether it's contract rented naval base, or whether it's enhanced defense cooperation agreement provides U.S. forces with rotational access to these bases, America is there. And that doesn't make China comfortable, but it makes their alliances comfortable something China probably doesn't like. Now, some people ask and say, well, Pat, how strong is Taiwan against China? Take a look at this chart here. This is according to Statista, the military imbalance in the Taiwan Strait. If you look at mainland China is the red and Taiwan is the blue. So personnel, obviously they got a lot more, but Taiwan would offer an additional 89. Tanks, Taiwan would offer another 850 if they're able to invade them. Artillery pieces, you see the numbers there. Aircraft carriers, they have nothing to offer. Destroyers, they have four to offer. Frigates, they got 22 to offer. Tank landing ships, they got 31 to offer. Submarines, only two. Fighters, they got 300. Bomber attack, zero. Transport aircraft, look at that right there, 30 to 20. So now if you say, but Pat, we I'm still paranoid, like what Dalio Musk and four-star general is saying, they're still going to invade them, no problem. The challenge China is going to face is there's only two months out of the year that they can attack them because the sea in that area is very choppy. So the only two months they have, it's not like it's a back-to-back -back two months where it's like 60 days straight. It's either April or it's October. Any other month, it's tough for them to invade. The other problem they have is they don't have any allies. Everybody surrounding that area just doesn't like China, whether it's Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, they're allies of US, or it's Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, and India. Again, they're not full-on allies of what China's got going on. And then the way Taiwan is set up as a country, the region, it's a little bit out of whack. If you look at this chart right here, if you look at the green, the green will show you that there's roughly 3,700 meters in elevation is the green, and then the rest is a little bit lower, which means if somebody wants to invade, it's not really the most ideal way an island is set up to invade. But again, they could if they want to, but it's going to be a little bit more challenging. And for Taiwan to fight a potential invasion, they've got some certain things they've done themselves as well, which one is mine laying ships in case they do attack, boom, they would explode. Setting up oil pipelines at beach entry points that can dump oil into the ocean and set the entry point on fire. They have scorched earth tactics, guerrilla warfare, and China does not have the infrastructure to deploy its entire air fleet into the combat zone. So China's Navy has quantity, but it lacks quality, and most of China's military jets cannot make it to Taiwan because of its distance. So now the, the case study that China has, China's been watching Russia invade Ukraine to see, well, let's see how the world is reacting to it. At least Ukraine, there is part of NATO, so NATO's going to back up Ukraine, but who's Taiwan part of? Well, maybe this is the reason why China could attack Taiwan. But if they do, Taiwan has a lot of allies. And does China want to lose U.S.? What if they lose U.S.? And okay, let's just say China does invade Taiwan. Who's going to back them up? An emptied Russia with resources? That's who's going to back them up? Who's going to back them up? So it's very complicated when you look at this, China's friend making skill set is not that good. They've not made enough friends in that region, in that area to say, we're willing to help you. They've pissed everybody off that uh, is not wanting to see this become a reality. So Musk, Ray Dalio, four-star generals, very smart. 
for saying that this could possibly happen and it could possibly happen but if it does it may be very complicated on the way they do it they're definitely going to need someone's help whose help no one knows yet having said that if you got value out of this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you've not seen our video on nato exposed it's a phenomenal video click here to watch that video take care everybody bye bye bye, -bye.